What's up guys, today we are partnered up with the Japan Food Product Overseas Promotion Center, or JFUDO for short, and we're gonna be tackling the subject of shochu and shochu cocktail. Shochu is a very popular spirit in Japan that we rarely see used here in the United States, but that is beginning to change. And since we're committed to bringing you guys the most accurate spirits and cocktail content, today we're gonna go deep into the subject of what shochu is, then we're gonna make a cocktail with it, and then we're actually gonna use different types of shochu and make the same cocktail three ways and compare and contrast the flavor profiles. Shochu is a clear Japanese distilled spirit usually made from a single ingredient, which can be sweet potato, barley, rice, or buckwheat. It can also be made out of brown sugar, sesame seeds, and even carrots. It typically comes in around 20 to 25% ABV, but can be as high as 40%. And the flavor profile varies depending on how it's distilled and the raw ingredients used, but typically it's a bit reminiscent of sake with hints of melon, citrus, and green apple. There are two classifications for shochu. There is hongkaku shochu, or single distillation shochu, and korui shochu, or consecutive distillation shochu. Hongkaku roughly translates to traditional. It has restrictions on ingredients and can only be distilled one time. This shochu is gonna be much more flavorful and carry more of the aroma of the material used to make it. So for like a little clarity, tequila is distilled twice, vodka is a product of continuous distillation, and gin is a neutral spirit like vodka, but which has been flavored with different botanicals. In the case of shochu, different distillation techniques can produce shochu with wildly different flavors. Even shochu made from the same sweet potato or barley can produce very different tasting shochu. The story of shochu really begins with the story of distilling in Japan, and nobody knows exactly when that happened. Many scholars believe that distilling came to Japan via the Ryukyu kingdom as early as the 14th century due to some evidence that locals were making awamori. The early spirit was a far cry from the shochu that we know today, which seems to have emerged in the early to mid 1500s. This is the earliest record of distilled spirits in Japan, and although the writer doesn't note the name of the spirit in his account, Japanese scholars believe that the spirit was shochu. So as time went on, sweet potato, which isn't native to Japan, was introduced, and producers began making shochu from satsuma imo, or Japanese sweet potato. Japanese shochu is easily the more popular selling spirit in Japan, outselling whiskey by a long shot, but for now, and part of the reason we're making this video is that worldwide, it's still really well kept secret. So the traditional cocktail that we're gonna be doing today to make with shochu is known as a chuhai, which is an abbreviation of shochu highball. These drinks can be found all over Japan. There's really nothing to them. They're quite simple. They're just shochu mixed with some type of fruit component, such as fruit juice and topped with soda water. Today, I've made an original chuhai. I'm calling the City of Angels chuhai, and I've got three different expressions of shochu. So I thought it would be kind of fun to make the drink three ways with the different shochu styles and see how the flavors change. So I think a good place to start in this video would be to taste through the different expressions of shochu. That is really where you're gonna start when you're creating cocktails, especially if you have something that you're not that familiar with. Uh, I'm familiar with shochu, but I haven't used it a ton. And so we have this one shochu here, which is made out of rice. This one is made out of 100% barley. And this one is 83% sweet potato. And then the rest is rice. All right, so let's taste this first guy right here. It's just very light on the nose. You get a bit of melon, lime, lime leaf. There's a light, like a little bit of citrus in there. And then you get that same sort of maltiness that you get with uh, sake. It's very reminiscent of sake. Oh, it's nice and clean very bright and citrusy, kind of a short finish, and it's really not strong. You don't get a lot of um, burn on this. This is, what, 24% alcohol, so 48 proof. Again, very light on the nose. You get more pronounced melon on this, a little bit of citrus, but it's a little more subdued. A tiny bit of alcohol. This one, it comes in at 25% alcohol at 50 proof. So just a little bit more proofy than the last one, but not by much. Mmm, wow. You can like taste the barley. This one's a lot more sharper and it doesn't have that, you know how sake has sort of a rounded flavor? This has that flavor, but it's really sharper and cleaner. Um, and it, it's not as rounded as the, as the last one. And, and again, a pretty short finish. Okay, this one I can just smell the sweet potato. I mean, it, just from down here, you can smell the sweet potato. 
it's like, woo, it's like, whew. It's like very, very much, you know, the flavor of what it was distilled from. Very strong on the nose. I mean, it just tastes like a sweet potato. Very strong sweet potato flavor. That's kind of earthy. It still has like a nice sharp cleanliness to it though, that I really like. It doesn't die in your palate, but it's kind of a short finish. So you're not tasting that flavor. It doesn't go on and on and on. It just sort of, you know, kind of cuts off. There it is, let's make some cocktails. The last thing I'm gonna say before we get into the cocktail is that, you know, part of the reason why we made this video is as part of a promotion that Jfudo is holding in the United States. And they've partnered up with a bunch of bars who are gonna be making two different shochu cocktails. And it just so happens that Death & Company here in LA is doing two shochu cocktails for this promotion. So after we make this drink, we're gonna head on down to Death & Company and we're gonna get to talk to Matthew Bellinger, the program director of Death & Company and be able to taste their shochu cocktails. But first, let's get into the drink. First thing we're gonna do is three quarters an ounce of lime juice. I'm gonna do half an ounce of Midori. And then we're gonna do half an ounce, but like a light half an ounce honey syrup. And I did a three to one honey syrup. FYI. So as I've said, I have three different shochus here. One is made out of uh, rice, one is made out of 100% barley, and the last one is made out of sweet potato. This is actually a blend of 83% sweet potato and 13% rice. Um, so these should render very different flavored cocktails. I'm assuming this one's gonna be very clean in flavor. It's got, you know, kind of that sake style, you know, kind of nose to it. I can get a little little bright, you know, maybe a little melon in there, a little citrusy. And then we're just gonna do an ounce and a half here of our shochu. And then we have barley, ounce and a half. So this one is a little bit deeper on the nose. It, it has a, a very similar nose. You get a little melon, you get some citrus. Whereas the rice one was very, a lot lighter. This one just has like a deeper kind of aroma to it. And then last but not least, the sweet potato shochu. And this one, I mean, it smells of sweet potato, like it's crazy. Like it's really robust, kind of malty, but it's really sweet potato forward. It has like a very like malty, strong, kind of musky scent to it. Aha, oh, look at that, they're almost perfect. It's been a while since I've had to shake two cocktails. It's... Very yellow. It's like all the rest of the ice right there. I mean, you can still just smell the sweet potato in this. Like... This one's also different in color. Really, really should be doing to make sure that this doesn't layer on top of the ice is doing this. Pouring the soda down the spoon, which will make it go all the way to the bottom. It'll follow the spoon all the way to the bottom. I'm just gonna give this that little three and a half turn. Two, three and a half turns. One, two, three and a half. Okay, let's try it. Ooh, magnifique. Oh, so good. Nice and bright. Very sharp in flavor. You do kind of get a little bit of the maltiness of the shochu in that very vibrant lime and melon flavor. The honey syrup also provides a little bit of extra kind of mouthfeel, body, and a little sweetness to it. I like it. That's good. Okay, second one. Again, nice and bright, very lime forward. The honey syrup is really good with the lime. And then you get more of the kind of malty shochu flavor. You can really taste the barley in this one, uh, much more so than this one. There we go. So in this one, the shochu is the dominant flavor profile and you really get that very malty, very sweet potato forward flavor profile along with the melon and the lime. And it does go well, but it's really dominant. It's not as balanced as the other two, which are a little cleaner and a little softer, but they all work 
really nicely, respectively. So there you guys have it. All right, now that we got our cocktails squared away, let's head on down to Death & Company and go taste their cocktails. Uh, my name is Matthew Bellinger. I'm the general manager here at Death & Co. LA. Right on. So yeah. something tells me that Death & Company is the place that shochu has been on the menu for a while. When we opened in late 2019, early 2020, we had a shochu drink on the menu here. I find it like so interesting that shochu is something that in Japan outsells whiskey. Yeah. It's insanely yeah. popular. Yeah. But it's only a very small percentage of like global sales. Yeah. And a lot of like American drinkers don't really know that much about it. So like when somebody comes to this bar and they're like, what's that? How do you characterize it for them? So shochu is, is essentially a, a grain-based spirit where they haven't distilled it as many times and they haven't aged it. So rather than the whiskeys of the world where the way that aging has imparted flavor to a whiskey, if you remove that entirely and say, this is a spirit that's about the raw material and how it's transformed by fermentation with koji mm -hmm. and then how it's transformed by, you know, single distillation in a pot still or a, a comp still. And so it's, it's sort of like a more flavorful version of the base distillate that goes into, you know, again, rye bourbon, scotch, whatever, which is a bit of an oversimplification and potentially, you know, raises as many questions as it answers, but right. at least you at least you can right. contextualize it with something that someone's already familiar with. So you guys have two new shochu cocktails on the menu. That's correct. Um, what are they? So we're gonna be running two cocktails with shochu on the menu, one of which is basically a take on a classic chuhai, a uh, very classic presentation of a shochu highball. Basically sweet potato shochu and sparkling water. The sweet potato shochu that we're using is a Kurokoji Asaki Manen, which is a very flavorful, like really like rich textural sweet potato shochu. And the idea of that cocktail is just to really feature the flavor and texture of that spirit in a context that's you know focused on, on that ingredient. We're adding a little bit of a garnish to that just to put some interesting context on it to give it an aesthetic flair that's what you would expect from a Death & Co cocktail, but it is essentially just shochu and sparkling water, which is one of the most traditional ways to enjoy it. So the second cocktail that we're serving is with Ichigo Saiten, which is a barley shochu. That one's called Double Vision. It's a sour, maybe like almost a variation on a daiquiri. Mm -hmm. It has the Ichigo Saiten, lychee, honey, fresh lime, and fresh grapefruit. So again, it's a little bit more complex and more of an exploration of like what you can do with these spirits if you're gonna use them in a drink that you might find on the Death & Co menu in general. Shochu is something that I was familiar with, but not something that I was really intimately familiar with until we started this project. But just the cocktails that we've made in this video and then also the cocktails that you've presented mm. to me just like blown my mind and yeah. it's something that I'm really sold on. What are your parting words for people who are just, you know, interested in expanding their knowledge and expanding their, uh, I don't know, experience a little bit when it comes to shochu? The place to start is to just take the take the shochu that appeals most to you, that try it in a classic. Try it in a daiquiri, try it in a highball, try it in like a martini or something because these spirits have such depth of flavor and so much versatility and they will reveal like different aspects of themselves to you in all these different contexts. So like you can really play with it in every single, you know, classic template. And then based on like the other flavors that sort of come out in that context, like whatever you're smelling or tasting uh, in that very simple recipe, then it might suggest, you know, the more complex thing that you can build on top of that. Matthew thank Bellinger, thank you so, so much for having thank us so at the bar and thank you so yeah. much for this chat. It's been illuminating. Happy to have you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Cheers.
back to the set. That's it, guys. Three original Chu highs for you and a little field trip to Geffen Company. What more can you possibly ask for in one video? Not much. Today's pro tip is to branch out and try something new. Just because you have something that is the same spirit doesn't mean that they always taste the same and you can get different expressions of cocktail based on the changing of that. So in this video, we did uh, different shochus with wildly different flavor profiles making the same cocktail to see how it changes, but that also applies to many different spirits. So don't be afraid to try something weird, to try something new, and to experiment. That's what this is all about.